Three Corners is just your average small town. Standing on the banks of a flood-prone river with a large pub anchoring the village at a once-famous three-way intersection. Now it's simply convenient. As people chase the country dream, the country lifestyle, just not the unceasing agricultural workload. Population, 2,000-ish. But like all small towns, scratch the surface and you'll be surprised at what you find underneath. In that sense, Three Corners is really no different to any other small town I know. Except perhaps for some of the characters you might meet. Not a minute too soon. She sat at first, calm. He was in the best of hands. She went through the motions, calling the children, letting them know. They'd meet her as soon as they could. He said he felt just a little bit off colour and went to sit outside under the jacaranda tree. Her favourite. The only one he'd let her plant in the garden. His garden. And only because it was a gift from their son. The day was hot and so dutifully, between jobs, she took him out a glass of cool water, the grass crackling dry underfoot. The glass before last, he shoved away. Don't fuss, woman. I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I'll, I'll just catch some shut eye. He was gruff, but that was just his way. He didn't like to admit to being sick, ever. He held the cup loosely in his hands and she had the washing to do. Two loads of washing. Two loads. She sighs and regrets them now. His grubby clothes spotless and still hanging on the line. She made a mental note to remember to get them in when she got home. Home. She started to shake in the cool of the air-conditioned waiting room. Clutching her arms to herself to try and stop it, she shuffled back onto the old wooden pew. She saw again the sun-baked yard, the droop of the tree, the lowest branches caressing his hat as he slumped in slumber. The sunlight glinted off the glass that lay underneath his hand on the grass. She worried about him. He always worked so hard. And they weren't getting any younger. He did so hate to ask for help. Brought back from her thoughts, she looked up as people passed by hurriedly. She really, really wanted to know if he was okay. But the people, they all looked so busy and she didn't want to interrupt such important jobs. She took a deep and shuddering breath. A kind nurse, dressed head to toe in pale pink scrubs, noticed the shaking and sat beside her on the hard bench. She held her hand. Such a little thing. But so much comfort. I don't want him to go. It came out, almost involuntary. She didn't even know she'd said it out aloud until the nurse looked over. I'm sure that he'll be fine. Words with no real value. They're doing their best. I'll just look in. The nurse hurried off, and it seemed almost callous given what was going on, but her hand without the nurse felt far more than cold. It felt like dread, slowly moving its way up her arm. She shivered again. He didn't like the cold. He wasn't breathing when she brought the last glass of water out to him. She surprised herself at the way she acted. There was a nurse, 10 kilometres up the road. They played golf together once. Jane. And they'd kept him going until the ambulance arrived. She was calm. But now, her nose had started to run and the shaking continued. You can't leave me. She prayed. We're not done yet. Slowly, she became aware of her daughter on one side, her son on the other. They didn't yell, ask or say a word. 
taciturn by nature. And just like him, they huddled, frozen in the anticipation of any news, good or bad. Anything would be better than this. This not knowing. And all around them, people carried on, not oblivious to the screaming change their lives were going through, but careful, careful not to intrude until the slow, deliberate steps and the wonderful smile that lit up in front of them. Today's episode of Three Corners was produced by our maestro. Posty. And featured the spotlight tones of... Walter Williams. Erin Grech. Joey Moore. And... Jack. For more stories, go to hittheroadjack.com.au or subscribe to the Three Corners podcast. 